Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. You know, even in this modern day of scientific thinking, there are those who still hold to some of the old philosophies. Ideas such as, when you get older, you can't learn new ideas, that the people in the out-of-the-way parts of the country are less intelligent than the folks in the city areas, and so forth. Now, some of these thoughts come from our young people of today. Some would call them know-it-alls, but I disagree. I'd rather say these attitudes come from youthful energy and impatience. Our story today is wrapped around these things. A battle between youth and age, the university and the backwoods. It's the story, An Old Horse Learns New Tricks. Boy, I'm glad the teacher's convention is on. We'll have a long weekend and I can be out here. <laughs> Classroom was never like this, I can tell you. Oh, boys, just smell the pines and the fresh air. <laughs> I know how you feel, pal. It's murder to have to stay inside a lot after you're used to being out in the Lord's country. Now, you speak plenty truth, but education necessary. Yes, Gray Wolf, it surely is. Most necessary. Yep. A fella who don't want to grow up to be a pumpkin head. <laughs> don't get me wrong, fellas. I'm not belittling education. I intend to get all I can and then some. Yes, sir, but... Those pines sure smell good. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, you think we make second elk herd before dark, Bill? I hope so, Gray Wolf. We better step on the gas, though. Come on, Storm Boy, let's go. You Come on, Gray yeah, Wolf! What's the matter, Storm? Easy, Storm Boy. Hey, what's wrong with Storm? I don't know. I'll take a look at his hooves. Easy, boy. That's uh, right. Hooves are right, Bill. Yes, they're in perfect condition. I don't see anything that would be irritating them. Boy, he sure doesn't look like his old self suddenly. He hasn't any zip. I don't like this, honey. We'd better make camp right here and now. I think we got a sick animal on our hands. Oh, big boy. Let's cooperate. We'll finish your examination in a few minutes. Now open your mouth and don't bite my hands. Watch your bill. He's bashful about letting folks look at his teeth. <laughs> You're telling me. Uh, Storm, open your mouth now. That's a good fella. Now shine a light inside, pal. We'll have a look. How's, how's this? That's fine. Mouth in good condition. He look like he's in good health so far. Yes, he does. Okay, Storm, we're all through. You can go and graze now. Whatever is ailing that wonderful horse is something we can't see. It's deep down inside. Yeah, you're right, old friend. Storm is sick, and we can't tell what's wrong. Oh, jumping grasshoppers. What are we going to do? We've got to get Storm to a veterinarian. Tonight? No, not unless he suddenly takes a serious turn for the worse. We'll get him to the vet at the crack of dawn. You plan to watch him all night, Bill? Right. You fellas go ahead and turn in. I'll keep an eye on him. We take turns, Watch Storm. Nonsense. I'll stay up with him. You fellas get your sleep. But why can't we take turns? Leave him be for now, Sonny. He'll change his mind after he gets tired enough.
Bill, it's three o'clock in the morning. You haven't slept a wink yet. Yeah, I know, pal. Well, why not let me sit up while you sleep? I'll be glad to do it. I'm glad to stay up, too. You get sleep now plenty quick. Yeah, I think I'll accept your offer. Oh, good. I told you he'd give in and listen to Sands when he got tired enough. <laughs> Go back to sleep, you old walrus. <laughs> I want you to know that this old walrus has been sleeping with one eye open all night. I know. Who do you think you're fooling? Myself? How storm? Ah, uh, you not look worse. I don't think his condition has changed much. Oh, that's good news. Boy, it's bad enough when an old horse gets sick. But a four-year? Why, he's in the prime of life. You said it. Wake me up at the crack of dawn. And I mean crack. Mm, this fire feels good. Boy, there's a real chill in the air. Ah, uh, winter just around mountain, Henry. Yeah, you said it. Pretty soon we'll have the old snowmobile out. Hey, Storm's lying down. Uh, maybe he rests. I hope so. Should we take a look at him? Ah, uh, just to be on the safe side. Come on. Ah, uh, Storm, you okay? I wonder if he's really resting, Grey Wolf. Ah, uh. I think he's too weak to stand on feet. We find out plenty soon. Storm, get up, boy. Come on, get up, boy. Storm. He, he, he wants to, but he can't. What a terrible shame to see a beautiful horse like this dying. Uh, I think you speak more truth than we know. Do you really think he's dying? It looked that way. Oh, no. Not Storm. I think we'd better wake Bill up right now so he can do something for Storm. Do you think it is really? Yes, really? pal. Storm is slowly dying. But how can this happen? Why, one day he's fine and healthy. Next day he's passing slowly out of the picture. What's wrong with him? It's my opinion that the beautiful animal's got something working on his spine and nervous system. You have something there, old-timer. He's lost control of his legs. Do you think he's got a tumor? Could be. Well, can anything be done for him? Or are you going to have to shoot him? I'm not giving up yet, pal. Not good. What you plan to do, Bill? Yeah. Tell us. It'll be daylight in another hour. I'm going to call a cargo helicopter and have him land in that clearing over there. Oh, but that's 300 yards away. How are we going to get Storm to the copter? We'll improvise a skid and roll him onto it and then pull the skid with your horses. Oh, that sounds great. How are you going to get Storm on the whirlamajig? We'll pull the skid right up the cargo ramp with your horses, and we'll all go for a ride. What do we wait for? Henry, you find the best way for us to pull the skid to the clearing. When you've done that, break camp and get the gear packed. Right. Stumpy, Gray Wolf, you fellas start cutting saplings and young trees to make the skid. Uh, we do plenty quick. I'll radio for the copter and figure out some way to mark the clearing for the pilot. Then I'll help with the skid. Come on, let's get to work. I want to get Storm out of here as quickly as possible. Yes, sir. Sure. One do. question, right Bill. Yes, pal. Do you think that the Lord would hear my prayer for storm? Can we pray for animals? Well, I don't know of any reason why we can't pray for animals, Henry. The Lord made them just as He made us. They're part of His creation. I don't remember anything in the Bible that restricts what we pray for. As long as we're sincere and pray in faith, believing that what happens is the Lord's will. Thanks, Bill. We pray for people we love or care about. I don't see why the Lord wouldn't hear prayers for animals we love. After all, they can't help themselves. You're right, young feller. I think you'll find us all doing the same thing as we work. Praying? Yep. Now let's get to work. <laughs> Thank you. 
Henry, will you run down to the clearing and bring Barney up here? Sure thing. Now uh, we can use another man to get Storm on scared. Right. There's no reason why he should wait around in the clearing by his lonesome. How you coming, old timer? Yeah, gotta whittle this down a bit. Now pull that rope, Gray Wolf. Right. Yeah, I'm all finished. Ah, uh, me too. Looks like you're taking the last hitch in the lesson, son. Yep. There we are. This skid ought to carry storm. Uh, that right. Henry and Barney come back soon. Then we move storm. Right. In the meantime, let's get ropes fastened to the saddle horns of your horses and get ready to move out quickly. As soon as storm's on the skid, you can bring your horses in. I'll tie your ropes to the skid and we'll head for the copter pronto. Bill, he's a big horse. You said it. We'll roll him over and onto the skid. Henry and Barney, you take his forelegs. Gray Wolf and Stompy, you take his rear legs. I'll handle his head and shoulders. You understand? Right. Okay, okay. sir. Yep. yep. All ready now? When I say go, easy, Storm Boy. We're trying to help you. You all ready, fellas? All right, go. Come on. Easy, boy. Easy, Storm. <laughs> More. Boy, that's it. That's right. More. Little boy, that's it. Easy, fella. Easy. There we go. Phew. That rascal weighs plenty, all right, but we got him on. I think we do. Good job. Even Storm, though, we try to help him. Good work, boys. Now get your horses, and we'll get Storm aboard the copter. Use your radio, Barney? Oh, uh, sure. Help yourself. Thanks. Bill Jefferson calling State University Station. Ranger Bill Jefferson calling State U. Over. State U calling Ranger Bill Jefferson. Over. I want to talk to Dr. Clem of the veterinary school. All right, sir. You'll have to stand by until we can get him to the station. Over and standing by. I'll stand by. Thank you. Over and standing by. Where are we going to land? There are several small pastures close to the agricultural college. We can set down in one of them, and then we'll pull Storm up to the hospital. Well, then what? How are you going to get him inside? they got power lifting devices there, Barney. They'll be able to handle the big fellow easily. Oh, good. We should be at State U within half an hour. That'll be fine. I'm going back to check with the fellas. Let me know when Dr. Clem's on the air. Dr. Clem. Why, hello, Bill. How are you? It's been months since we've talked together. That's right, Doctor. Say, are you in a plane or at an airport? I'm in a helicopter with my horse, and he's very sick. Oh, well, uh, any idea what's wrong? No, I don't. It seems to be all internal. Mm-hmm. Well, um, bring him in, Bill. We'll take a look at him. Be waiting for you. Giving him a going over with a fine tooth comb. Yeah, he's one of the best in the country, pal. You'll find out what's wrong, that's one thing for sure. Oh, I hope so. Storm getting bad fast. I'll say he is. That sling they've got him rigged up in is supporting his whole weight. Yeah, 
completely lost the use of his legs. Well, what's the answer, Dr. Clem? I wish I knew. What? You mean to tell me you can't find out what's wrong, Doc? That's what I mean to tell you. You're right, Bill. It is something internal, but I can't find a thing wrong with that animal. Now what do we do? Yes, Doctor, now what do we do? Whatever you do, it got to be soon. Well, I'm going to X-ray. <laughs> now you're talking sense. Them there ray machines will find it. Oh, don't get overly optimistic, old-timer. There's some conditions that, well, even X-rays won't find. We'll just have to hope for the best. How long will it take before we'll know for sure? Oh, four or five hours. Four or five hours? He'll be dead by then. Oh, there's no immediate cause for alarm. He's lost his power of locomotion, but he'll live for a few days yet. Now, let's get out of here and let the man work. No sense in us standing around here. You said it, sonny. We're acting like a bunch of worried parents. Now, let's take a walk around and look at the farm. And maybe we'll feel better. Boy, I never knew four or five hours could be so long. You ain't just joking there, young feller. I suppose it'll be five instead of four. I don't know, old friend. What are we going to do if the doc can't find out what's wrong by X-ray? Uh, we not worry about next bridge to cross until we come to it. Yeah, it's a good idea. Come on, let's walk around and burn up some more of a worrying. Hey, here comes the doc. <laughs> he seems to be lost deep in thought. He ain't seen us yet. How'd you make out, doctor? Hmm? Oh, I didn't see you. Oh, it's times like these that make me wonder what we really know. It turns out to be very little or nothing. You mean it doesn't look so good for Storm? No good at all. The x-rays didn't show a thing, other than he was put together correctly at birth. Jumping catfish! You're supposed to be the best vet in this part of the country and have the best possible equipment here for treating sick animals. You tell us you can't find out what's wrong? Henry, hold your tongue. This man is only human. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, Henry. I'm just as disturbed as you are that we can't find the answer. Let's go take a look at our four-footed friend, shall we? <laughs> what are we going to do? Hold his hoof while he dies? We've got a horse in our hands that's dying in his primal life. And not one of us can do a thing about it. Not a thing. <laughs> Bill, I'd say he won't live more than three or four days in this condition. I'd like your permission to do an autopsy on him after he dies. We can't help him, but we might be able to save other horses with the same sickness. Dr. Clem, would you mind if I called in another veterinarian? Why, I... Well, I don't know. Who is the man? Jeremiah Sutter, from the village of Many Pines. Bill, I'm surprised at you. Why, that man isn't a vet. He just calls himself one. Why, he's nothing but a, a backwoods quack. That's beside the point. The man's done some remarkable things with sick animals. Oh, yes, I've heard stories about those, too. If they're fact and not fiction, well, the man's had some pieces of good fortune. You still haven't answered my question. I can't. I'll have to talk to my superior. Will you do that, please? Well, Bill... Uh, I don't know. D don't you think you'd better reconsider... Dr. Clem, need I remind you that Storm is my horse? All right. I'll see what I can do. How long does it take for that Dr. Clem to ask whoever he's going to ask? Uh, plenty long time now. Did you hear about that crazy ranger <laughs> Listen, asking Henry. Doc Clem if he could have the old hermit from Many Pines brought in here to look at his horse? <laughs> yeah. He must have holes in his head. Well, the dean would never allow a quack like Jeremiah Sutter to come in here. 
Some of the students are hot under the collar about it, too. <laughs> and they might as well call him an Indian medicine man as call him that guy. Yeah, you said it. If they let him come, I'm going to do plenty of squawking and right to the... Ah, oh, you like that. <laughs> they talk like they have hole in head, not us. Hey, maybe that's Dr. Clem coming now. Bill, I have talked with the dean, and, uh, well, his answer is no. Where's the dean's office? I'll be glad to show you, but I know it won't do any good. We'll see about that. Let's go. Dean Rogers, this is Bill Jefferson. Well, Mr. Jefferson, uh, apparently you feel that your powers of persuasion are greater than Dr. Clem's? That's beside the point. Why won't you let Jeremiah Sutter come in here and take a look at my horse? Well, he's an old hermit of the woods, Mr. Jefferson. I don't think that he'd be able to help your horse, and also we'd be the laughing stock of the school. Dean, my horse is dying. It's almost the same thing to me as if one of my men were in the same situation. You mean you think more of your horse than you do of your men? Apparently you haven't got your hearing aid turned up high enough. I don't wear such a device. My hearing's perfectly normal. Then you heard what I said before. An animal gets to be a part of you when you live with him day in and day out on the trail and the range. He's been a faithful friend, always willing to do my bidding. And I'll be hanged by the neck if I'm going to let him die without first exhausting every avenue of help. That's all very touching. The answer's still no. I'm sorry to see that your professional jealousy is showing. What did you say? Need I repeat it? If you were as big a man as you think you are, you'd be glad to have Quack Sutter grace this campus. Or are you afraid you might learn something from him? Uh, Bill, aren't you getting a little strong? And how? I know what I'm saying, and I'd say it for anyone, sick animal. All right, Mr. Jefferson, bring in Jeremiah Sutter. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I hope he can help your horse. But I rather doubt it. He probably hasn't read a vet medical journal or book since Hector was a pup. Now, easy, Storm. Let old Doc here take a look and find out what's wrong. Why is Doc Sutter spending so much time on Storm's neck? I don't know, pal. Uh, Dr. Clem? Uh, yes, sir? How quick can you send up for surgery? Oh, 20 minutes. Uh, would you do that, please? Yes. Uh, Sid, Rick, uh, get the operating gear ready and set up in 20 minutes. Plenty of undergraduates to help you. Yes, sir. Right away. Uh, thank you, doctor. Have you uh, made a diagnosis, sir? Uh, yes, I have. Wonderful. Will Storm recover, Mr. Sutter? I believe so. There's no reason why he shouldn't. But this will be dangerous surgery. Well, in the name of common sense, sir, what is your diagnosis? Yeah, don't keep us hanging in the air so long, Jeremiah. Uh, this animal has an intramuscular tumor. And the tumor is pressing on the spinal column in his neck. If it isn't malignant, he'll be fine as soon as we remove it. What are the chances of it being malignant? Very small, Bill. He's a youngster, and I think we've caught it in time. <sighs> Thank the Lord. How did you find it? We couldn't with X-ray. Out in the backwoods, we don't have X-rays, Doctor. We have to see through our fingertips. There we are, Bill. As soon as that youngster comes out of the anesthetic, he'll stand up on his feet again. His feet and legs will do as his brain orders, and the orders won't be short stopped by the tumor. You don't know how much we appreciate what you've done, Jeremiah. I'll find some way to express my thanks. Is the tumor malignant? No, not in the least. I've had several cases of these fast intramuscular tumors in my time. They're nasty unless you get them quickly enough. Isn't it wonderful to know that Storm's going to be all right? You said it, young feller. I kind of tickle all over inside as the joy bubbles bounce around. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty happy, too. You do a great operation, Jeremiah. Yeah, that's what I came for. I'll pack my bag and go back home now. The job's done. 
Oh, Mr. Sutter. Oh, Dean Rogers. I have an apology to make. We've done you a great injustice, sir, and I want to be the first to admit it. Your ability and knowledge are remarkable. Well, thank you, Dean. But I came merely to do a job. Bill, who, who is this man, really? Jeremiah Sutter, backwoods veterinarian. Really? Oh, come on, Bill. I know better. He's right, Doctor. Don't let the fact that I am from the backwoods bother you. Come out sometime and visit my lab and see my library. Us hill country folk keep up to date, too, you know. You sure do, Jeremiah. The trouble with these fellas is that they think you can't teach an old horse new tricks. <laughs> You're right, Stumpy. Sometimes we do feel that an old horse can't be taught new tricks. But I'd say it depends on the horse, whether he wants to learn or not. Say, aren't you glad the Lord worked things out by having Jeremiah Sutter right handy when he was so desperately needed? I am. Well, see you next week for more adventure with again. Our program today gives me, Ranger Bill, just a little time to talk to you moms and dads about our adventure stories and why we're on the air. We all know that every time a boy or girl listens to one of our programs, he gets some impression of the Christian life and the character of the people involved. So we must be constantly alert to guard the image that's presented, to make it realistic and truthful neither setting up false ivory tower heroes for fellas and gals to aspire to, or creating the impression that Christianity is an impossible goal in this day and age. We also try to present Christians as people, something which they are. The faults of a Christian don't have to be glossed over. He's human too. So we try to present to you, the listener, a story that from your point of view is a factual photograph of a way of life, namely the Christian way, and showing individuals living, seeing, understanding this way of life, or maybe missing it completely. Let's all be honest before God so that truth can survive, and our young people will turn out to be the good citizens and real Christians that we want them to be.